Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of It's About Time. My partner in crime, Jared, is not here tonight as he is at a Devil's game, so you and I will just be discussing the Breitling Galactic 41 unboxing. I just recently got this watch in today from Breitling, and I wanted to go through it with you, the positives, the negatives, and so forth, and to give you a complete review of this piece. The first thing you do notice when you get the box in from Breitling is the fact that it does have a riveting outside box. Uh, this is meant to be more along the lines of the 1940s World War II look with the rivets, as you see here. Uh, nice little feel to it. Once you open that up, you get to the inside travel box, which is made of genuine leather. And once you go inside the box, we do have the watch itself. Now the watch itself does come, the first thing you do notice is the fact uh, of the case that it, it does come in. Um, it does have a protective uh, dial case which I think is really cool and really unique because one of the things uh, a lot of watch collectors and just people who um, have watches in general hate is when they get scratches dents or nicks in their watches, so Breitling thought of an idea uh, to protect it while you're not wearing it, and that is what this piece is for. So if you can look at this piece, it does cover the outside bezel along with the sides, which I think is a very, very unique piece and that more watches should start doing, especially very expensive watches. Let me get to the watch itself. Okay. And as you can see, I did choose the Galactic 41 with the blue face dial. And it is a very, very nice piece. Uh, the face does have um, a nice glow to it, both in the sunlight. And you can definitely see, I know there are some uh, deeper blues that you do have these days. Uh, my last, one of my other... Um, unboxing episodes, I showed you the Aura Staghorn. That was a much deeper blue than this one is. Uh, this one reminds you more of a sky blue instead of a midnight blue, which the Aura's kind of was. So, um, that being said, uh, I'll give you a little information on this watch. Let me prop it up over here so you guys can take a look at it for the time being while I run down the specs of it. And let's see here, hopefully we can get a pretty good look at that as I run it down. Okay, so it does have, as I just mentioned, the Horizon Blue dial. Uh, it does have a 42 hour power reserve. It has the Breitling Caliber 49 movement, which is a pretty new movement for Breitling out this year. It has uh, 28,800 vibrations per hour. Uh, only 22 jewels, uh, which is very interesting. They are limiting the jewels uh, of the newer watches. Um, it does have the scratch-resistant glare-proof sapphire crystal. Now you do have to watch when they... This is one thing Breitling does that I particularly am not a big fan of. Uh, I know Jared loves the uh, glare-proof sapphire crystals. I am not the biggest fan of it. Because after a while, what starts to happen, you have an outside coating here of the crystal. And after a lot of use, you start seeing scratches in the coating. It doesn't mean there's scratches in the crystal. It just means the outside glare-proof coating is wearing off, but it looks like the crystal is scratched. Which gives you that same feeling, which is not something I wish Breitling would do so much. Uh, so there is a negative of not just this watch, of all Breitling watches in general. Um, it is water resistant for 30 ATM, which is 300 meters or 1,000 feet. Um, one of the reasons I did buy it was because of its size. The last one I had was the Breitling Headwind. Um, when you're looking at the Breitling Headwind, one of the reasons that I decided to uh, move on from that piece was because I do have a smaller type wrist and the Wind Rider uh, the Headwind Windrider is a 43.7 uh, millimeter watch, which does lay pretty big on my particular wrist. But if you have people with uh, bigger wrists, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, to me personally, 
it just doesn't work uh, because it's too big for my uh, taste. But outside of that, it was a great piece. Back to this one, though. This one is a 41 millimeter, and that does fit my wrist a lot better. I usually try not to go over 42 um, because, again, uh, my wrist just can't handle it. it just doesn't look good. Uh, its case thickness is 14 millimeters. It does have a case weight of 90 grams. Uh, the inlet size is 20 millimeters, so you do that. They do mean when they say inlet size, they do mean the band. So it does have a 20 millimeter band, a unidirectional rotating bezel, of course, uh, luminescent hands and markers, a deployment buckle, as you can see over here, which does have a resizable for four different adjustments, uh, as you can see, and a screw down crown and case back as well. Now, um, something I am going to have to get to adjust, because um, I like my watches running perfectly, what happens in the factory when they send you these from the factory is they usually set them a little fast. So don't be surprised if you get any brand new watches, uh, if it's running four to six seconds fast a day. They usually like their watches running a little fast rather than slow to show you that everything is working okay. Um, in one of my previous episodes for a unboxing watch review, uh, I showed you the Horotech Swiss um, part that does come in two pieces that you can get from esslinger.com. Okay, they do come in two pieces like this. Each one of these pieces is about $65. Uh, so thank God there's only two. And this was for a bigger, this was for my uh, previous Breitling. So I'm going to have to get a smaller size piece uh, to unscrew the back because this is about the only piece that will do it. Breitling uh, has patented their own uh, unique backing, so only their tool can open it. You'll see that with Bulgaria as well. Um, so keep that in mind. Go to esslinghair.com if you want to purchase the case back opener for this piece itself. Uh, overall, like I said, 90 grams uh, in terms of the weight. It is much lighter than the previous models that I have had, including the Windrider and uh, the Chronomat. Um, they are much heavier. Um, to me, it really doesn't matter whether it's too heavy or too light. Uh, only the fact that it's too heavy and too big for your wrist, then it becomes a problem. Um, but this is more on the lighter side, and it does have the same band up here, where, where you get the um, difference in weight is really the clasp, uh, which they have made adjustable, and therefore it does save on weight over here, and same thing over here. So you're going to have a much lighter clasp, which does give it a lighter feel. The other thing that I did notice um, about this piece that I haven't gotten in my other previous pieces was the fact that it is a lot thinner uh, than previous watches. So, whereas you have the Chronomat and the Windrider, for instance, that are a lot thicker uh, than this one, and this is more to be a sport piece uh, than a dress piece like the other ones were. You notice that the previous models that I just previously mentioned uh, did have gold and gold plating, so they were meant for more of a formal type of event, whereas this is straight steel. It does come in three different versions. Um, it does come in gold, does come in gold plating, like a two-tone, and it does come in straight steel. I prefer the straight steel because um, it's better when you get it scratched, it's very easy to polish out. That is something I cannot stress enough with not just this watch, with every watch. Um, the fact that if you do want to go with watches, um, please get them in stainless steel if you do want to get them free of scratches, uh, dents, stuff like that. You can't do that with gold plating. What happens with gold plating is it rubs off and then you're just stuck with it like that for a while. So that is something that I think um, that most people should be aware of uh, when it comes to um, stainless steel. So it's always a good bet to go with stainless steel. Now in terms of um, what I give it, I do like uh, another feature of this piece that I think is unique. I'll show it to you again, which is the big date. And what's really nice about the big date is the fact that a lot of these watches, because you know whatever size you get, 
you'll notice that the date is kind of small on most models, especially Breitling. Um, I have this with my uh, Ulysses Nardine, and I have really loved the big date ever since I have gotten it. So um, it is one of my favorite features in watches so far, and I just wanted to share that with you. It does have a very, very nice feel to it. Um, no problems with, um, I notice on some of my other pieces that the, unit, the crown, the screw down crown, tough to screw in after a while. Uh, this one I'm having no problem so far, uh, unscrewing and screwing it in and tightening up. So there is no issue there either. I'll show you how it looks on my wrist real quickly before I get to the luminescence part of it. Okay, it does snap in very nicely. Okay, as you can see, on my wrist, uh, 41 does look ideal. Um, anywhere between 38 and 41, Jared and I go through this all the time um, with watches. I do have to take a link out. Speaking of the links, um, if you're going to remove a link, please have a watchmaker do it. These links come in six different pieces. I know it doesn't look like it, but they do. Uh, these links are, they have four different screws and they, they do separate into six different pieces. Three on this side and three on the other. And it is very tough to get it out, especially if you have no idea what you're doing, which most people do not. So please bring it to a specified um, watch service person or a watchmaker so they can take it out for you. And once you get that out, it's just readjusting um, the clasp right here, which is very easy. You just take a um, safety pin or any type of sharp tool and you can um, take the actual screw over here and pop it out to adjust it to where you need it to. So that is not a big deal in it either. So uh, the luminescence. Luminescence is very good with this piece. I'm going to charge it up for a second here so I can show you exactly how it looks in the dark. Okay. Um, I do like the luminescence. It ranks right up there with the Oris uh, staghorn that I have. This one is your typical green, um, but it does last quite a while, and it does have a uh, very good luminescence overall. So I will show that to you in one second. All right. Okay. Let's show you what this baby can do. And there you go. Okay, so there's your luminescence, your typical standard green. And it does have the big dot on the top. Again, the hours and the hands and the second hand, as you can see it going around, uh, does all light up in the dark. So there isn't a problem with uh, luminescence as usually brightly. That's something that they're known for being a competitive dive piece. Overall, I give this watch uh, so far about a nine. Um, I'm gonna have to wear it and see exactly how well the Breitling Caliber 49 movement uh, performs over time uh, compared to my other pieces. And um, I look forward to uh, testing it out and seeing how it compares to the rest of my collection. Uh, again, thank you everybody for joining me tonight. Uh, please send us your texts, your emails, um, anything you want uh, for questions, ideas, any other unboxing episodes you'd like us to do, as well as other any ideas for future episodes. Jared and I will be back next time as we will discover um, different triple date watches, uh, which we've promised you in the past. And again, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on another episode of It's About Time.